Well, it's time to talk more football. Thanksgiving leftovers, right? That's what we've got today. Week 12 preview part two. Now we had an abbreviated part one, Bloom, because we did the Thanksgiving Day games and we also did the Black Friday game. Thank you, Roger Goodell, for something we didn't even know we needed or perhaps didn't need. But it's Saints and Atlanta. Got Bloom all choked up when we talk about this one because we're waiting. And full disclosure, we pre-recorded this so we could get the holiday in. So Bloom could get his choking fit done before the holiday. So we are recording this with little to no injury information, including Derek Carr. So our apologies. We want to spend some time with our families. We hope you are spending time with your families as well, briefly while listening to the show. But Bloom, let's talk about the Saints. With car, without car, because that's going to make a difference on the road against Atlanta. Yeah, and this is always a fun matchup for these teams. And hey, this division is still up for grabs. So New Orleans coming out of the bye will it be Derek Carr. Will it be Jameis Winston. Uh, we'll see Carr still in the concussion protocol coming into this week out of the bye. Uh, don't know if it would change that much for the passing game. Carr's a little better in the short passing game. Winston at least will take more chances, but uh, either way, Chris Olave's in uh, with Michael Thomas on IR. Rashid Shahid becomes more interesting. Taysom Hill always tears up Atlanta, so I think you like Taysom Hill as a tight end here. And Alvin Kamara, you'll keep in. Hopefully, the rest will help him have some bursts down the stretch, uh, even though his ceiling has been lower. But New Orleans trying to take control of this division, and Atlanta sees trying to find a quarterback. Just trying to find a way. Desmond Ritter back in the lineup. But we've seen this before, Bloom. So we already have the information that we need. Lots of John Smith. <laughs> you know, he's got right. his favorite. Right. So Desmond Ritter, we're going back to his favorites, which means sorry, Kyle Pitts. Yes. Uh, and I, I think that you're going to see both tight ends. We saw that with Johnny Smith. Now he's going to be more consistent with Desmond Ritter as he was earlier. And with Kyle Pitts, you, you're just in tight end purgatory. Uh, will we see the trend of Bajon Robinson actually featured like a player that went number eight overall? Should be, as we saw Arthur Smith protest too much uh, as he really gave the ball to him over Tyler Algier. Finally, we can only pray. Also, Marshawn Lattimore is probably out with an ankle i think so drake london looking a little better here uh and with desmond ritter you know see i'd just be interested to see the approach you know they, do they try to limit his pass attempts we saw early in the season high percentage low a dot safe throws if the running game gets going they can win that way uh, new orleans offense can be inconsistent so, again, a divisional battle with a lot of playoff implications. Yeah, a lot of playoff implications. And the thing with Ritter is, like, just don't turn the ball over. Right. But the problem is pressure makes him wet the bed. So, you know, that's that's his issue. Anyway, Pittsburgh has fired Matt Canada. Right. Praise be to the heavens. And Kenny Pickett's still the starter. I like when that report came out because I'm like, of course course he's still the starter mm. why would he not be the starter but bloom the scapegoat of matt canada is gone and now it's time for pickett against cincinnati they got their own issues kenny pickett go be good okay right. and i sent right. you the meme about uh, i think it was a spider-man meme not the spider-man mm. pointing meme but the spider-man crying meme when gwen gwen stacy was like uh saying that zach wilson kenny pickett are the same guy right right go not be zach wilson kenny pickett go be good yeah, yeah, and see, before I jump into the Pittsburgh side, I do want to remind everybody again, because we've had so much great support over the years, and it, people want to know how to support football guys, and for that matter, how to support your fantasy football chops, and that's why you're here, right, other than our company. Thank you. It's very validating, but uh, during this week, we have our Black Friday sale with 20% uh, off the first year of the subscription, and if you go to footballguys.com slash Black Friday 23. You also find how to get 20% off Football Guys merchandise for your sorry Joe needs. Cease. <laughs> so, you know, and again, uh, we love doing this. We want to do it for free because, well, I don't know if y'all would hang out with us if we had to pay, uh, but I know you'll be happy if you pay for what we have in a Football Guys subscription. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you want your sorry Joe t shirt, 
when you were screaming at Matt Canada to actually run the offense. So the yeah. Steelers get it now, and we'll see how much they get it in a divisional game. Yep. Playoffs are coming. Right. And Steelers, are you going to limp there? Or are you yeah. going to surge there? Yeah, and this is a game, too, that, you know, this is a AFC North game, Kenny Pickett against Jake Browning. And you're right for the Steelers to say, oh, by the way, Kenny Pickett's still the starter. We're saying, hey, the problem is all Matt Canada. Everything's going to be fine now. Uh, and again, hearkening back to Desmond Ritter, just don't turn the ball over. 20, 25 pass attempts. You're not really looking forward to playing Deontay Johnson or George Pickens, Friar Muth, anybody in this passing game. You would expect and want and see, as a Steelers fan, you want the running backs to touch the ball 40 times. You want Jalen Warren. He's in your lineup. I think after last week, you're not going to risk leaving that on the bench, a 74-yard touchdown. And Najee Harris should get 15 to 20 carries and hopefully a scoring attempt. This isn't the Cleveland defense. This is the Cincinnati defense. Good, but not Cleveland good. Cleveland put up some historic numbers. So a lot of running backs don't turn the ball over. And let's see what Jake Browning can do. Yeah, let's see what he can do. But downgrade all Bengals and don't start anybody. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Joe Mixon. Sorry. I mean, running backs rough out there. So Joe Mixon, I, I could see scenarios where you're going to leave him in or at least flex him. You know, with the, they can get a touchdown uh, one, maybe. Uh, if T. Higgins plays, if he doesn't play, probably dropping him. Hopefully there's somebody worth dropping him for on your waiver wire already this week. Jamar Chase, we're really just deciding, are we going to play him in the future? And I understand playing. He did get a touchdown at the end with Browning. It might be bad, but it also, it's Jamar Chase. So depending on how many lineup spots, how deep your league is, you're probably playing him, but we'll circle back to this next week. And for the Bengals, Cease, you could feel, and this is okay. This is like rational fan base and organization. They're really turning the page next year. Okay, let's look at the bright side. You're going to get a higher draft pick you know, maybe evaluate some more young players. You know, hey, let's see some more Chase Brown or something. I don't know. You have a focus now. And that's where we're at as we get to the Thanksgiving week. A focus, what's possible for these teams in this season, where it is in the arc of the franchise, of the coaches, of the players, a lot of big decisions coming up. And the Bengals know, yeah, they aren't going to get anything out of this year. A tale of two cities and a tale of two seasons in the national right. football league a tale of two teams that always get crossed up so here's what i'm doing bloom i'm taking mm -hmm. a selfie hi bloom and i'm going to send you this this is my notepad that i jot down our ever popular time stamps oh don't remind me to do what the heck flex anyway because i had to triple check okay carolina versus tennessee right. not l-a-r yep. but c-a-r and my c looks like an l and well it's probably going to be an l for carolina anyway but let's talk about the Panthers. Can they show any life against right. the Titans on Sunday? Right. Again, see, in the focus of the season, both of these teams know they're going nowhere. And they're supposed to be optimistic for the future with Bryce Young and Will Levis. Everybody cheer. Smile. Hey, Bryce Young, Will Levis. Everything's going to be okay. The future's so bright. Uh, yeah, this is a terrible game. Terrible game for fantasy. <laughs> you know, Adam Thielen, I guess. Yeah. Um, Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders are going to split the backfield. At least, you know, they can stick with the run. The running game did get some traction against Dallas. So they're both what the heck flex plays, speaking what the heck flex. And Tommy Tremble coming on, scoring a touchdown. I mean, just watching, see how he can develop. But that's about the most exciting things on Carolina's side. And this is just, you know, again, depressing game. But with teams that are supposed to have the quarterback of the future, really, really, we mean it. Yeah, we thought we did anyway. And Tennessee thinks that they do. And Derrick Henry, all right, you want him to bounce back a little bit. New Hopkins kind of keep it up, right? And then we're left to wonder, which Will Levis will we get this week? Well, it is Carolina Bloom. Yeah, he'll be safe with the ball. And you didn't see him do much until the game was out of hand last week. I, but again, Derrick Henry. So you. Carolina's run defense isn't exactly a pushover, but you would expect Derrick Henry to get 20, 25 carries, maybe 30 carries, you know, maybe treat it like a Malik Willis game and really let and throw a touchdown pass. Uh, Nuke Hopkins, I guess we need to talk about as a wide receiver, three flex, uh, not a, an imposing matchup against Carolina. So he did get the touchdown again in garbage time. There might not be garbage time in this game, like a 13, 10 kind of game. And yeah, so you feel for these teams, 
That's what happens when the NFL moves into SEC countries. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Uh, what happens when we talk Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Indianapolis Colts? Um, as of this recording, Bloom, Shaq Leonard hasn't been picked up. Right. But I did advise the Broncos to do that. Not them personally, but just on the air. I'm putting it in the universe, Bloom. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Tampa Bay side first, though. Talk about the Colts side and why they made that decision, which we all could see coming. Um, Tampa Bay. Uh, you get what you get with Rashad White. Okay, it's kind of the same thing. You get what you get with Baker. And Mike Evans is awesome and stupendous. And it takes away from Chris Godwin because Baker's his quarterback. And Kay Dotton is mostly cold sometimes warmer right yeah maybe yeah. against the colts yeah well hey I, and i'll talk a little bit more on this when we get to seattle or we talked about seattle uh playing on thanksgiving this is a tampa team that is still in the divisional hunt and there's a spot or two up for grabs in the nfc in the playoffs it's probably going to go to a team that right now you would not say is playoff worthy i mean is minnesota playoff worthy i don't know maybe but Tampa, this is an important game for them. I call this one the Dungy Bowl. See, see former Pittsburgh Steelers, part of the Steel Curtain, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Baker Mayfield in the playoff hunt. And in fantasy football, uh, outperforming his ADP as a quarterback to Superflex. Rashad White outperforming his ADP with his PPR appeal. Mike Evans outperforming his ADP. Chris Godwin, maybe a little more Chris Godwin in this one. Is Indy tougher to run on? And why would you try to establish the run with Rashad, Rashad White anyway? Uh, Cade Otten, like you said, sees running hot and cold, but four out of the last five games, four catches. I mean, you just lost Mark Andrews. You would take four catches in this game. And uh, on the other side, also surprise playoff teams, by the way. We talked about Indy's schedule earlier this week. This is one of their most difficult games left. Yes. So if they can win this one, clear sailing. Clear sailing. Uh, Shaquille Leonard cut. You okay with that? He was unhappy, I think. I, I mean, I think that... He didn't whenever, ask for his release per report. No. Well, that we know of. I mean, now remember, this is the Colts, right? This is the organization that hired Jeff Saturday. This is the organization that gave, put us through that pointless Jonathan Taylor debacle where he ended up getting signed long-term anyway, right? Right, right. But, but a few weeks back... See some going IDP talk now, by the way. No IDP blitz this week. We love you all. We'll be back. Um, Zaire Franklin missed a game and the assumption was well, of course Shaq Leonard's just going to slide in yeah, of course. to the middle linebacker spot but Segun Alubi who an undrafted free agent who actually acquitted himself played really well like showed hey I've got a future in this league he took the spot and Leonard's rolled it and grow and I think at that point there was a sense of okay your plans for me and my plans for me are not the same mm -hmm. and where is this headed and the NFL is weird about personnel decisions right and i'm just totally speculating I'm, gonna, I'm always speculating do i ever need to say that um maybe this is one of those situations where you're giving leonard some sense of self-determination now you know like this is not headed anywhere so let's just go ahead and end it now uh it, it was a bit shocking but at the same time like it's the colts right so that's the norm. The norm is for them to do shocking personnel decisions. All right. Jim Irsay with that red nose. That's a tell. He is uh, talking about it. Hey, I will say this. Hmm. You know, the recovery community, on behalf of the entire recovery community out there, he is speaking openly about addiction, about recovery, and and that's worth something. So we'll give that. That is. That is. Good job. Good job. Indianapolis, good job if you can win this one. And Against the Buccaneers at home, this is a tougher one, though, Bloom, but yeah. lots of Jonathan Taylor. The, exactly. What's your answer? Jonathan yeah. Taylor. Right. Coming out of the bye. I mean, we're in week 12, right? They've got seven games left, winnable games. C.J. Stroud in week 18 is the toughest game they have left. And this is one of the tougher games they have left. Why would you have Jonathan Taylor touch the ball in seven games these 180, 200 times, like 25, 30 times, you know, yeah. 20, 23 carries, yeah. four, five, six catches a game. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? I mean, that's why you pay him. You know, look what Saquon Barkley did for the Giants last week. I mean, you, that kind of place in the game plan. Uh, if you have a better quarterback than Tommy DeVito, uh, so at least you know Michael Pittman's going to get fed. Maybe some Josh Downs, as we learned that he's been dealing with his knee issue uh, since OTAs. Mm -hmm. And again, you look at this team schedule, playoffs cease at this point. I wouldn't even just say playoffs are possible. If you start playing out the scenarios, it's almost disappointing if Gardner Minshew 
doesn't make the playoffs. Right, right. Uh, speaking of not making the playoffs, this one should be quick. It's New England yeah. against the Giants. <laughs> now, again, we are pre-recording this, but I almost guarantee you, Bloom, by the time you watch this, Friday probably, do we even know who the Patriots' starting quarterback is? So Patriots and Giants, I will do the rare toss it both to both. you. Yeah. Yeah. Do the rare both because yeah, it's yeah. Patriots and Giants. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I just think of those great Super Bowls. You know, CC make a short list top 10 Super Bowls. Both of those Super Bowls are on the list, right? Maybe if you even made a short list top five Super Bowls. You um, beat an undefeated team. That's got to be top five. I mean, ar- arguably, I mean, CC, I know that when I'm an old man, an older man, um, a lot of stuff is going to fade from my football memory, but those games are not. Those moments in those games are not. And it really was a rivalry of franchises in the way that Dallas and Pittsburgh was in the 70s because it was a whole different sense of, you know, how you go about this with the personalities and the way they did their business. And you would have flashed for 2007, 2000. Well, where will these proud franchises be in 2023? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Um, Ramondre Stevenson <laughs> touched the ball a lot in this game. Uh, Zeke Elliott, it's a what the heck flex. You know, again, what when you don't have a quarterback, you just use the running backs a lot. Demario Douglas as a wide receiver, three flex. Hunter Henry as a what the heck tight end play. What do the Patriots do? At quarterback, Will Greer, are they really that desperate? I mean, the fact that there are Patriots fans calling for Will Greer, Cecil. There are fans of a team calling for their team to start Will Greer. That's where we are. And Malik Cunningham, and look, for Malik Cunningham, see, I do think there's actually an argument that if you really do think Cunningham has promise as a quarterback, there is an argument for not playing him. Like, put, don't put him out there before he's ready because you could ruin him, you know? Dorian Thompson-Robinson telling us, I I understand now. Now you could say that's an argument to put him out there because he said, now that I'm out there, now that I was mm-hmm. out there, Right. But what do you do? You see, put Malik Cunningham in, like throw him in the water, but don't let the sharks pull him down and tear him to bits. Just pull him out after one game and then let him learn from that. Rookie Ben Roethlisberger, man, run the ball. Yeah. Well, that was so much. Rookie more Ben, and this yeah. is the perfect opportunity. I said we'd be short on this. We're actually going long because Cunningham's well, interesting. And yeah. if you, this is the time to do it. You're facing the hapless Giants. I know they got a win last yeah. week. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, don't get cocky. Right, this that's is what the I time see. to debut a guy like Cunningham. Yeah, that's fair. Watch so, him play. <laughs> I want to see it. You know, on the other side, Tommy DeVito. It was Washington. Now you're facing Bill Belichick, and sees what do we know about Bill Belichick? When he faces rookie quarterbacks, usually he teaches them a lesson. He's gonna eat. Pers- Go ahead. He's gonna eat. That's what's yeah. gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna he's gonna rub your face in it. But hey, Saquon Barkley is a receiver. Saquon Barkley's back in your lineup. Maybe Wandale Robinson is a desperation play. Don't think we're going to see Darius Slayton, Daniel Bellinger as a what the heck desperation tight end play. And yeah, that's where we are. Giants and Patriots. Hope you enjoyed those Super Bowls. Jacksonville, Houston. Okay. Jacksonville. This one has massive implications. Oh, yeah. Dude. This is the game of the week. Massive, massive implications for this contest because Jacksonville, can you keep up with them? Mm-hmm. Not the other way around. Bloom, let's talk about Jacksonville first here. Isn't that right, Cease? Isn't this like the race? And look, they're seven and three, Jacksonville, Houston is six and four. But when you're watching a race or when you're watching somebody who just caught a long pass try to r- take it all the way and they look over their shoulder, they're about to get overtaken. Or look right? at the scoreboard. <laughs> yep. Look at the Jumbotron. Isn't, isn't Jacksonville maybe looking over their shoulder. I, we're going to find out. That's what's so great about this matchup. Mm-hmm. Travis, uh, Travis, Trevor Lawrence with say Jones back in your lineup. And this could be the shootout. This could be the fantasy bonanza. You're seeing less ETN. He's still in your lineup. Just know to adjust expectations, like in 60, 65% of the snaps, you're seeing more Dearness Johnson, more tank Bigsby. Yes. I'd go back to Calvin Ridley. You know, have a pretty compelling option for me to not go back to him after the return of Zay Jones and live in this offense. And yes, Christian Kirk, because of the shootout possibilities, even Zay Jones is a what the heck flex. We know that he's a favorite in the red zone. If anybody is shrinking in this offense other than ETN, um, it's Evan Ingram, who's just not as compelling, but it's tight end. So chances are he's your best tight end. 
Hmm. Houston's got their best. And again, we're pre-recording this. We don't yet know about Damian Pierce. This is very important. But the way Devin Singletary has been playing, Doesn't even matter. with Pierce has sunshine coming out of his fingertips. Like, yeah, Singletary should still have a sizable role. So we'll talk about it, Bloom, again, pre-recording. So right. we're not quite sure. But we know about the other weapons in this Houston offense that are pretty exciting. Yeah, it, it's really exciting. Wow. Jacksonville, Houston, again, this terrific matchup. And CJ Stroud is in, you know, unless you have an elite fantasy quarterback and he was your backup, which is possible. Uh, Devin Singletary, I don't care if Damian Pierce is active. You saw what he did for this running game. It would be just head, desk, bash if they really go back to Damian Pierce. I don't think that they're that dense, you know, when a guy has back-to-back 100 yard games, back-to-back games where he gives you 20 plus carries and really gets this running game on track. And uh, is Noah Brown going to play? Kind of like the Pierce question. Look, if Noah Brown's out there, if he gets in a full practice, I'm interested in Noah Brown. But even mm-hmm. if he is out there, I'm playing Tank Dell. I Tank Dell could be a wide receiver one the rest of the way. And le- put a uh, pin in this one. When we hear that a quarterback asked for his team to draft a wide receiver and they draft that wide receiver, Let's pay attention to that because that's been one of the best picks you could have made. Maybe by the end, the best pick you could have made in the Nico Collins, also one of the best picks you could have made. He, so Collins and Dell are in the lineup. Dalton Schultz, that's worked out. Mm-hmm. Little did we know he went to a better situation. He went to right. a better situation. Right. He's not part of Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. He's with the best <laughs> rookie quarterback. Uh, so what a game. What a great game. And again, urging on what J.J. Watt said uh, for the Houston community. You know, get behind this team. Mm-hmm. This is D'Amico Ryan, CJ Stroud. Uh, this is great. This is really, really fun. And I, I look forward to seeing what happens. Letting good football people make good football decisions. Think of the disaster Houston was not that long ago. Yeah. Right. And now good football people making good football decisions, getting out the way. Well, and I'll say this for the organization, because somewhere somebody with the last name McNair or at that level or someone who reports to somebody with the Mm -hmm. last name McNair had to say, you know what we have to, we have to hit, you know, like in the, in the machine shop, right. When someone's arms getting cut off, you got to hit the button and say, kill it all. Stop. Start over. Emergency stop. Mm -hmm. Emergency kill switch. But that takes a lot. But dude, know? when guys like John McClain are like publicly calling yeah. out that when John McClain, right. Is there any name that we could say that has more reverence when it comes to an NFL beat? Well, or just a team. Uh, I shouldn't say a team because really good. He goes back to the Oilers. Yeah. A, a, um, a, an city. Organ- a city, right? A city. And see, you know, as we're having this conversation, it occurs to me that we need to say that Nick Casario, we haven't said his name a lot Mm because that's the one guy that bridges the bad times to the good times, right? Mm -hmm. Nick, And then granted, who knows who Nick Casario had number one on his board, whether it was Young or Stroud, who knows? Um, It looks like the move for Will Anderson wasn't, it wasn't, not only was it not bad, uh, it really actually ended up being good for this franchise. Mm -hmm. And the oddest thing is we talk Belichick Brady, Belichick Brady, Belichick Brady, right? But what's fascinating is, for the most part, the front office types that have come out, right? Tom Dimitrov, right? John mm-hmm. Robinson wasn't terrible. I mean, I know that right. things didn't end well, but the Titans did have a renaissance mm-hmm. during his era, you know? So Nick Casario, the latest, leave Ziggler and the Raiders. Sorry, Jason, you know, but uh, interesting stuff here. And yeah, let's bask in it. And especially in CJ Stroud, man, CJ Stroud, very few come this way that has that transformative, you know, I see, I, I think of like Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, where there's just something about them that brings people, uh, you know, gets them aligned, right? Like you, Rick James aura, they change the color of other people's aura to their, the color of their aura, right? Spreads. Mm. That's what they do. That's what CJ Stroud showed up and he just started doing that. Come here. Come here. You'll give you a big old kiss. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know what is like drafting CJ Stroud? Hmm. Get in your football guys Black Friday deal, footballguys.com slash Black Friday 23. 
And Bloom, you've got all the details on 20% yeah. off your first year subscription. Yeah. And 20% off of uh, all the football guys' merchandise for the football guy, football Get gal, your Sorry Joe t shirt, man. Yeah. I want to see you wearing it. Just take the picture, put it on the gram, and then send it to us on Twitter. Yeah. Represent, you know. And uh, and again, I, I just think I mean, we even if you don't want to take advantage of, of a year, but you've listened to the show and you haven't subscribed. I, I don't know if everyone's aware that you can get a monthly subscription. You can try try it for a month for your fantasy football playoffs, mm-hmm. right? Doesn't that make sense? It's a way to beat the system. Yeah. Uh, but get in the subscriber ecosystem to help support the show and see. I uh, you know we always over deliver. That's what we do because we're we're an early internet company. See, so we're from like the pre dot com boom. Mm-hmm. So we still believe in actually delivering something of value shocking yeah you love the show <laughs> you want to support the show footballguys.com cleveland and denver is up next bloom and it is a broncos show but first we got to talk about the browns and dorian thompson robinson uh-huh broncos defense yeah they're not good against the run so how much faith do you have in the browns running backs this is going to be like a five yeah. to three game okay right, right, right. of the baseball score it's going to be six to three or Seven to six or ten to nine, like it's gonna be low scoring, hard fought battle in the mile high city. So the brown side is interesting, DTR, whatever, but it's also they're gonna run the ball and yeah. have that rookie be safe. Yes. And I think this is just a, such a common theme as we go through the week 12 preview is teams with limited quarterback play are gonna play it safe and good defenses. Also, they're going to play it safe. They're going to play a field position game, try to force mistakes, not make mistakes. And that's what this game is going to look like. Um, we did see Cleveland, th- Darian Thompson drops in through it 43 times last week. I, that, that's odd. It's a little much. Did, yeah, they did have him getting the ball out quickly. But like you said, Cease, I think running the ball with Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt is where it's at. Ford is a running back two flex. Uh, Hunt, more of a what the heck flex. Need him to score a touchdown. Now, if the passing volume's there, D. David Njoku, Elijah Moore, they're going to be there as decent PPR plays. Amari Cooper, you have to imagine Patrick Sertan, PS2, is going to be locked up with him. So you you already see the Browns don't want to leave Thompson Robinson back there on anything long developing, right? So I don't think that he's a good play here. Um, just play it safe. And, uh, and for Denver, ooh, well, I mean, they already play it safe against mediocre defenses I, I this is like fetal position yeah this is going to be a rough one so you love Cortland sutton but it's going to be rough you love javante williams but it's going to be rough yeah you might love russell wilson you crazy yeah but it's going to be rough so yeah expect a 10 point game for right. denver if they can get to 10 cease when was the last time there was a punt on third down in the nfl i mean that's <laughs> happened in our lifetime right I, I, I feel like i've seen a punt on third down before. it feels like a <laughs> belichick thing right yeah, like i'm gonna yeah. pooch kick on third down <laughs> yeah anyway they, they me russell wilson how's your pooch punt how's your pooch but you ever see cease if blink once if they're practicing pooch punts and you can't say anything about it all right so you got to watch the youtube to see whether they're practicing pooch punts with <laughs> You got punt yardage points. Um, yeah, Javante Williams, I guess, is a what the heck flex. You know, last week we saw more Samaj JP run. And see, you, you clued us in. Hey, they trust Samaj JP Ryan. They trust him, and you could see that. And you know, maybe he, maybe the Samaj JP Ryan offense. You want a deep what the heck flex? Mm. If they have the insight that the that offensive set is probably the best chance they have to move the ball against this mm-hmm. uh, defense and but modestly move the ball. i mean does denver move the ball any other way than modestly so yeah not a lot of offenses just don't make any mistakes anybody yeah uh was it a mistake to get rid of daryl henderson not really kyron yeah. williams is back so we got to talk la rams i know what team it is versus the cardinals so let's talk about the rams now with more mm-hmm. kyron williams but is Royce going to do a little bit more, at least for this week? Do they ease Kyron back in, or is it full steam ahead like it was earlier this year when Kyron Williams was an RB1 that you love to have? Yeah, flashback to week one, right, when mm. he was massive and no Cooper Cup, and probably no Cooper Cup in this one. Uh, so, yes, Puka Nakua, who's massive in week one, and Stafford, not so massive with no Cup, uh, a low-ceiling uh, 
medium floor option. You know, you hope he throws for 200 and a touchdown in this one. It is a good matchup, but really a better matchup for the running game. So that's why you like Kyron Williams, who should be fresh coming off of IR. And I hope the Rams, no name defense other than Aaron Donald, are fresh because they're going to chase around a fresh Kyler Murray. Mm, Kyler Murray stealing that iPhone, running around. James Conner. I just love it. Watching James Conner play football makes me happy. Because it's just like heart, determination, yeah, yeah. love of the game. Cancer survivor. Yep. Uh, now, fantasy GMs would be like, really, Greg Dorch? And not my guy, Marquise Brown? Really? Where? Uh, okay. Uh, where's more Trey McBride? We're left searching for answers when it comes to Arizona, Blue. Yeah, and but answers that might end up being pleasant surprises. Um, Kyler Murray's a quarterback one now. Uh, James Conner hasn't got the receptions. And that's the thing. Kyler Murray runs on a lot of plays that other quarterbacks might dump it off to the running back. But Conner, I still think there's enough appeal here to, to at least flex. Uh, now, Marquise Brown is the one that it, it, we're really going to step on the rake again to borrow from Alfredo. That you know, two weeks now with Kyler Murray, nothing. Are we going to expect in the third week something? Uh, uh, is he a sabotage drop? Should we have cued the Chuck D just to save the aggravation? Or do good things come to those who wait? A what the heck flex type, but you know the ceiling is there. We already have seen Trey McBride's ceiling scenario play out. One of the waiver wire pickups of the year. And maybe Greg Dorch could be maybe not a waiver wire pickup of the year, but one of the better pickups this week. If Michael Wilson's out, all he does is produces mm. uh, when he's out there. And that could be how Marquise Brown doesn't come around. Is Greg Dorch uh, a very compelling short intermediate target. I hope he gets a chance uh, to have a sustained opportunity because every time he gets a temporary opportunity, this is what he does. If you were looking at Kyle Phillips, you better be looking at Greg Torch. Yeah. Longer. Uh, what's the matter with Kansas City? Bloom, that's a hot topic. And I'm not talking about the spikes and wristbands. I'm talking about the Chiefs because Pat Mahomes has two touchdown passes outside of the red zone, matching Zach Wilson. Okay. Uh, more Pacheco is always the answer for me. What do you have? 18, 89. So it was close to 100 in the last game out against Philadelphia. But what a disappointment. Now you get to take it out on the Raiders. How's that look? Yeah, the Raiders that occasionally, occasionally play over their heads against the Chiefs. But uh, it should be a Chiefs team on the warpath. Sorry, that's a terrible thing. I don't want to encourage. I wish there is. Uh, I would not. I would not be uh, uh, sad to never hear the the the, uh, the tomahawk chop chant again. It's because I'm a Pirates fan. Uh, but Isaiah Pacheco has the upside, and Patrick Mahomes had the play to have a much bigger game against the Eagles. Just didn't have it on the other side of those passes. And I just could keep coming back to Jerick McKinnon. I mean, here's other than Travis Kelsey, who also had some miscues, a fumble a drop. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, Jarek McKinnon is a player that Patrick Mahomes can trust, or at least he hasn't seen recently that he can't trust him. Right. Roshi Rice is a player that we haven't seen show affirmatively that he shouldn't be trusted. So maybe even Canarius Tony. And look, these can be. There's nothing, there's no rule that says, oh, if a player only plays 20 snaps, he can't touch the ball seven times, right? I mean, Terry Tony, if you want to preserve him, he doesn't have to be even close to a full-time player. So let's see. I mean, that's the thing. What's wrong with Kansas City? I hope that Kansas City is asking themselves that and trying something different, doing something different, because we're past the trade deadline. So, you know, there's no, Terrell Owens ain't walking through that door. You didn't trade for Jerry Judy, so mm -hmm. there you go. Raiders side, uh, is Josh Jacobs going to do more? And then Aiden O'Connell, I'm fine with. Like He's going to throw into cover. Yeah, uh-huh. He's a rookie. I want him to learn. Maybe there's something there, and maybe not. Maybe they get trounced at home by the Chiefs. Yeah, and that's the thing. O'Connell is not going to shy away from a confrontation. No. Which, you know, when you play the Kansas City defense in fantasy, you like that, right? And for Devontae Adams, he had that ch chance to get the NFL push off touchdown last week, but he still has a low ceiling. It's a good Kansas City defense. Uh, Josh Jacobs has not been doing much in the passing game. He caught eight passes in the first one with Aiden O'Connell, but hasn't been doing as much. But maybe in this one, you want him to run the ball 20 times or 25 times. And I don't even care if it's 20 for 55 yards. You want to shorten the game, right? You want to cut down the number of possessions. You want to try to just get out when you're on defense, maybe even holding 
the Chiefs to a field goal. See what you can do. So maybe more running in this one because this is a tough defense to pass on. They have a good pass rush. They have Trent McDuffie. They have Legarius Sneed, uh, who shut down A.J. Brown. So you would think he's going to be on Devontae Adams. So again, you're not going to bench Adams, but you're not going to be surprised if he comes up small in this one. Jacoby Myers, maybe. Michael Mayer looking for a Mark Andrews replacement, maybe. Mm, uh, yeah. But but see, yeah, what I really want to see here from interim coach Antonio Pierce and Bo Hardegree, the offensive coordinator, is just don't leave Aiden O'Connell hung out to dry here. And maybe, just like last week, you can hang around this game. Yeah, Bloom, do you want me to be mean or is the holiday season I should be nice? Well, make sure that people know what you would say if you were being mean. Okay. Say it with holiday cheer. Oh, okay. The <laughs> I'm trying to think of some sort of Christmas carol. <laughs> I could r- bring this into the closest that Buffalo will get to the Super Bowl is this week against Philadelphia. Oh, sorry. My best friend's a Bills right, fan. Right, right. Uh, Bills, come on. What are you doing? Right. Now go out and win against Philadelphia and you totally redeemed yourself or not. But it's like, okay, but, but what Buffalo, what is Buffalo learning? Run, 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 run. Philadelphia, what are they going to do? They're going to run. They're going to tush push. They're going to beat you up. You better be ready. Josh Allen playing hero ball ain't going to cut it. So, yeah, more Khalil Shakir. As much Stephon Diggs as you possibly can have. Dalton Kincaid. But at the heart of it, Bloom, run. Yeah. I'm not sure if Buffalo is going to do that. Yeah, and you hope so. You know, I think Pacheco ran pretty well against Philadelphia on Monday night. James Cook should be in your lineup as a running back to flex play. Great matchup. You know, looking forward to this game. And again, Buffalo is going to learn what they're made of. Uh, Stephon Diggs has been slowing down. So, yeah, I think more Kincaid, more Shakir. Gabriel Davis falling out of favor. Two out of the last three games. Didn't even catch a pass. But you want to see more Cook and Murray. Uh, and you want to see, I mean, at the very least in the first game in the post-Ken Dorsey era with Joe Brady, Josh Allen played better. And against the defense, he threw three interceptions with, against, I'm sorry, uh, in week one the week that Aaron Rodgers went down on the first drive and the Bills lost to the Jets. So there's improvement. I mean, there's improvement from week one. There's improvement from week nine. Uh, But I agree with you, Cease, that I don't know that they've really done anything dramatic, uh, but confidence is big. And you look at the schedule coming up. And even though at one point, well, last week, we were saying, is this team even going to make the playoffs? If they can start winning against teams, like you said, Cease, that people expect to be in the Super Bowl hunt, they can put themselves mentally at least for themselves back there belief philadelphia has the ultimate belief in themselves and that's why the backfield's confounding julio jones will catch two passes (laughs) but it's like we already know what they're going to do and what they're going to do bloom is glorious yeah and it's not necessarily going to have to be pretty you know again kansas city took away aj brown who was on an historic tear a few weeks back Mm -hmm. and Jalen Hurts, I mean, what you like about this Philly team, Cease, and I think maybe what you're getting at, I don't want to put words in your mouth, is they, and I'm not saying Kansas City was necessarily the better team, but they don't uh, give up when they're being outplayed or outcoached or it's not working or they're having to really, really exert themselves just to hang around. Remember that game was 17-7 against the team that beat them Mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. So, and it's a, it was what impressed me most was they won a game against Kansas City that was a different kind of game than the game they lost in the Super Bowl because right. it's a much better Kansas City defense. Now, you could say, well, you know, for, for a bunch of drops, not a few drops, uh, Kansas City could have won that game. But uh, I think Hurts should be better against Buffalo's defense than he was against Kansas City's defense, give them their due. DeAndre Swift looks great with the rest coming off of the bye. And I think he's going to remain central for this offense. A.J. Brown should have a bounce back. There's no Legereus Sneed, no Tredavious White, actually, for this Bills defense. Devontae Smith is warming up. So, you know, the question is, is this easier to defend without Dallas Goddard? There's not really a third threat in the passing game. Uh, I think we're probably going to look back at week 11 and say Kansas City's defense is good and to go there and win says a lot about Philadelphia. So if Buffalo can go to Philadelphia and win, it'll say a lot about Buffalo. 
To that, I would say double true. Two games left in our ever popular What the Heck Flex Week 12 preview part two. Cecil Lammy, Sigma Bloom here on the Audible. It's Baltimore Ravens, it's LA Chargers, and the Baltimore side searching for uh, production without Mark Andrews, which means more ODB. I love Isaiah Likely. I love him. More Zay Flowers, too. That's a nice recipe. And with the backfield, we know if they're close, Gus is going to plunge it in or Lamar's just going to run. Yeah. What's fascinating to me as I was previewing this game by doing my little mental preview sees is this is the team, remember, in Lamar Jackson's first year, he started a playoff game against the Chargers and they humbled him, right? That was when, like, whoa, yeah, well, you can't just, can't just run around in the NFL. You know, you got to play quarterback. <laughs> well, he could play quarterback. Hey, everybody, fast forward. He could play quarterback. Chiefs, I'm sorry, Chargers defense, not so much. I don't know if they play defense. Um, Lamar, even without, I don't think this is necessarily going to be a good game for us to say, well, what is the po- Mark Andrews list? Ravens offense look like because it's the Chargers. I think, you know, again, Jordan Love just passed for over 300 against them. Uh, so you think Gus Edwards likely to get a touchdown. I'm okay with Keaton Mitchell back in your lineup as a what the heck flex mm-hmm. trying to make it. It's the Chargers. It's indoors. It's on turf. You know, the speed's going to come into play. Odell, again, I think you're going to have a situation here where he may not play more than half of the plays, but he has that burst now to get deep and he could become the favorite target like we talked about on the waiver wire show for Lamar Jackson. And then we'll see about likely, uh, you know, you could do worse than throw him in there. Again, he had an eight for one three game last year. And one of the two games, he replaced Mark Andrews. He's further along in his career now. This is a different offense, a better offense, probably. So uh, this could he could be one of the stories for us this season. Or we could see him split the role with Charlie Kolar, who's a good player. In right. His own right. You know, and maybe Rashad Bateman. Maybe this is the resurgence of Rashad Bateman, who's playing more snaps, looking better. Remember, he had the revision issue with the foot, started slow. So we're waiting to see who's going to step up uh, in this game. Probably more than one player will, because again, it's the Chargers. Yeah, it is the Chargers, and they're going to charge her, and Justin Herbert's going to get mad. Like when the introvert is getting mad, you know you've done something wrong. Lots of wrong. Other than Keenan, you're still starting Austin, of course. But it's like, baby, yeah, you're just looking for something. Quentin Johnson right. doesn't know what he's doing at all. Maybe yeah. that changes, but it's real ugly right now. And uh, I've said it before, Bloom, just put Kellen Moore in as the interim head coach. Learn what you need to learn and see how this team's going to look in the future without Brandon Staley. Yeah, and don't send Justin Herbert down the Andrew Luck path, right? Where he's Very just much out so. there trying to put the whole team on his back and falling short, and you're going to break him. You know, mentally, physically, you're going to break him. This is the kind of game that I, I, like you said, sees with only Austin Eckler and Keenan Allen. They are probably not that difficult to defend if you're a good defense. Baltimore has a good defense. So it's a tough draw. I could see benching Justin Herbert for some quarterbacks this week, right? Uh, It's not ideal. Uh, Austin Eckler, you want to see him do something in the passing game. Did very little in Green Bay. And other than one decent run, uh, did little in the running game. Baltimore, Donald Parra, maybe we're going to see mm. if Gerald Everett's practicing. Uh, maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's somebody who could be a third option in this passing game. Like you said, it shouldn't be Quentin Johnston. And uh, the Chargers are a team again. A couple weeks ago, we talked about you change this play or this play and this play. They are eight and two. Let's can add on another one against Green Bay. But Baltimore is a much taller order than Green Bay. Monday night, Chicago and Minnesota, now with more Justin Fields and Khalil Herbert. And it should just be more Herbert keeping going forward and getting that done for the Bears against Minnesota with, of course, Brian Flores running very exotic schemes. How do the Bears, who are somewhat limited, (laughs) right? how do they counteract that? Yeah, well, it's uh, Justin Fields. Do what you do, Justin Fields, which is pretty good. Uh, and I think for fantasy, he's in your line. You know, if someone said Justin Fields or, or Justin Herbert, which Justin, uh, I, that's Fields. Easy. Fields. Right? He's Fields. Yeah, he's yeah. back. He's back for fantasy. He's back as a passer. DJ Moore. Cole Komet has to stay in your lineup uh, unless you have a really good tight end option. Is Dante Foreman okay left with that ankle injury? So that's the big question. If Foreman's going to play, it's Monday night, so we might not even have clarity Sunday morning. Um, then Herbert is not necessarily a good play. Foreman's out. Herbert becomes at least a what tech flex. Rashawn Johnson will play a larger role. And again, Cease, I got to say, Bears, you know, the hope is Justin Fields builds momentum. You've got two early first round picks to add two stellar talents 
to a team that is actually looking like thanks lovey smith and thanks justin fields uh th- this is potentially on the verge of turning the corner uh i don't what we got to go back to like jim mcmahon i guess cease really to a time when it felt like it was okay it's what lions fans are going through now it's okay to feel optimistic about your team it's not just an emotional yearning a hole in your heart from having to watch this team year after year it's real it's real in minnesota coming off the first l in a while uh of course josh dobbs in there we already know the names now with more justin jefferson again we're pre-recording this so we can spend time on the holidays but i would assume based on him being close in week 11 and not playing that in week 12 justin jefferson would be out there and that would be quite fruitful for josh dobbs and company if in fact the superstar was available yeah exactly it's monday night uh, hopefully we'll know before you set lineups on Sunday morning. Um, if Jefferson's out there, if he's not out there, again, if someone said uh, Justin Herbert against Baltimore, Joshua Dobbs. Dobbs. I mean, he's doing it every week. How much more, the, how many more weeks do you need to see before you see he is a quarterback one for fantasy, especially if Justin Jefferson's out there, but even when he hasn't been out there. Uh, Alexander Madison's not going away. In this game, he's a flex play. Maybe Chandler's a what the heck flex. Uh, Chandler more involved in the passing game. Uh, if Justin Jefferson's back, you might say, oh, that's bad for Jordan Addison. That might be good for Jordan Addison. Remember, mm-hmm. a lot of his production early came on plays when he was just left alone. And that you understand how that happens when you got to worry about Justin Jefferson. TJ Hawkinson, maybe not 100%, still a fantasy starting tight end. But do we have Josh Oliver doing his John U. Smith impression coming up on the outside and getting into the tight end picture, which needs to be very wide because all the good ones are getting hurt. It is time for the ever popular what the heck flex. You're looking over your lineup and you need some punch. Well, what the heck flex? I got running backs on my mind. Okay. So my week 12, what the heck flexes Mm -hmm. include Samaji P. Ryan aforementioned Mm -hmm. Kenneth Gainwell. Mm -hmm. I think we mentioned him. Uh, There's Jet McKinnon, Roshan Johnson. Mm -hmm. I even got Royce Freeman as a what the heck flex this week. If we move to the wide receiver position, some what the heck flexes that I I feel good about you feel good when you start two two at well you feel good that Khalil Shakir is coming on some more there's the guy that I can't mention his name yeah Jahan Dotson what the heck flex sure keep it up Jackson Smith and Jigba who we already talked about in the Thursday preview but hey hopefully you paid off for you there but anyway Bloom let's talk about your ever popular week 12 what the heck flexes and let's say that uh, for the first time in a while 32 teams in action so maybe you don't need a what the heck flex Maybe you don't need a little extra punch in your lineup. Maybe it's really like you're only doing it because you're bored. And you're like, yeah, what the heck? I'm going to do something stupid and see if it works. Uh, so something that might seem stupid but work, like Ezekiel Elliott, New England gives their running backs 40 touches. Uh, the Carolina running backs, if they get 30, 35 touches with the running game online, uh, Keaton Mitchell. Uh, I like the wide receiver picks a lot better this week. Um, Jameson Williams coming on. Uh, again, Thanksgiving with Tech Flexes. Um, every wide receiver except Dontavian Wicks for the Packers, uh, Brandon Cooks. There's lots. It's like the the turkey with three drumsticks. Um, and then not on Turkey Day, Demario Douglas, Rashid Shahid, Nate Perry, Greg Dorch, Khalil Shakir. Mm. We talked about Roshi Rice. So pass the rice on Thanksgiving, and uh, yeah, it's week twelve. Here we go down the stretch. They come. And here we go. Make sure you check out footballguys.com and you get that Black Friday sale. And we've made it simple for you. Just click on that QR code right there. 20% off the first year of Football Guys subscriptions, custom tools, rankings, and advice. Footballguys.com. 20% off Football Guys merchandise. I want to see those Sorry Joe t-shirts out there. Get your Football Guys hat, of course, always at footballguys.com. Our offer ends monday november 27th so it's coming up it's football guys black friday sale make sure you check us out and make sure you check out our black friday sale sigmund that is a wrap everyone yeah. out there follow sigmund bloom follow ciso lammy i'll go third person that's right and as always thanks for watching stay tuned and please stay frosty <laughs>